Awesome. <laughs> so here we go, we'll roll right into it. Cool. Oh, I'm live? All right. So the uh, guy who put this thing on my face said I had good ears for this, which I don't take as a nice thing. <laughs> um, so I'm, I, I'm breaking in and uh, I had like three days to prepare for this and all of a sudden, so it's be a bit rough, but that'll be fun as well. Uh, I do a lot of presentations, like a lot of them. So I decided to start lying about me and to see if someone notices. And I started real simple, like the white lies, and no one said anything at all. So now we're at this, and I will say that's exactly how my stomach looked until I tapped. What are you guys saying? I blame you guys for this nice little cushion I have right here to keep you safe. Uh, so we're talking about uh, parse and why I care about parse. So PhoneGap provides some um, really simple ways to store data. Uh, local storage is a great example of a built-in DB. The file system, which is so easy to use, I love using it. Uh, but the problem you have with that is that all of this is going to be stored on the device itself. So if you want your users to be able to easily use, for example, more than one device, uh, an iPhone and an iPad, or an iPad and an iPad mini, um, and apparently there's other devices out there, maybe. Uh, but if you want them to use more than one thing, or, for example, even allow you to take your phone gap app and have data and a traditional website, because people still make those, right? Uh, and have the same data amongst all those different things uh, based on a per user type system, there's not a really simple way of doing that right now. That's where Parse comes in. Uh, this is a commercial company. Anybody here from Parse? No? Okay, great. Uh, I have no idea how much it costs. Uh, for their feed here, it's worked great for me so far. Um, I'm an evangelist, so I don't believe it would be real work. I make a lot of skippable demos a lot, and I've never had an issue with their feed here. From what I know, their feed here is pretty darn generous. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a screen a bit later. They also have really good ways to kind of track what you're doing with their survey. So if you're worried about getting very, very popular and what's, what's going to happen at that level, they make it easy to check into that. But you can definitely get started, you can sign up, you can do all your testing and see if it works you know, okay for you if you feel the fool about it without paying anything at all. Their primary feature is data storage, and that's where I'll uh, spend most of my time and uh, in terms of code samples as well, uh, but pretty much being able to take data, ad hoc data, and just store it for you, that is their primary thing. They also do a bit of site posting as well, so one of the interesting things you run into is uh, you have a mobile app, right, and you do everything on there, but you need like one dot com, right, there's like one thing that you need to be on a website. So it sucks to have to go set a server just for that one thing. So if you want to, you know, support, you know, one or two pages, et cetera, they can help you with that as well. Uh, they have APIs for everything that matters. And obviously, they also have JavaScript as well. They also have a completely REST-based API. I mentioned before that if you want to share data amongst your mobile apps and you have a traditional site built in, Google Fusion, PHP, .NET, Perl CGI, no one. I'm really aging myself here. Uh, I can't tell you how many Perl CPI scripts I wrote to do farm, uh, form posting. Uh, but if you have that already set up and you want to integrate it with parts, it's a really, really nice CPI that makes that very, very simple. So basics, you sign up. Again, you don't have to pay anything, get my credit card number or anything silly like that. You will make an application. You have a nice little dashboard that will say, I'm making my application. You will copy one JavaScript file, their entire SDK, in terms of what you have in your file system to be one file. They provide multiple different keys for multiple different things, so for their other SDK, et cetera, but you will copy essentially one application ID and one JavaScript key that, that you would use in your code. How many people see that and begin to worry? No one minds putting app keys in your source code. We're all cool with that. Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they, yeah, they, they, they know that's a problem and they have to work around for that. And then basically, you just write your code and it's pretty darn easy. So, in 
terms of like we do Odyssey to full CRUD, now in terms of storing data, what's really, really nice is that you basically can make, make your craft and then you just save it, period. So if you're building a mobile app to do beer uh, and movie reviews, then you have a beer object and you have a movie review object, and it just plain works. Uh, I am the old school server side guy for a long, long time. I'm used to the whole thing of that MySQL setting up my tables and all that, and going into the NoSQL world and just uh, you know, being able to store stuff feels extremely freeing. I love stuff like that. They also have really good query support, so I need all the beer objects that match this CPD and this price and this calories, etc. They also do some fancy things on top of the data as well. So, for example, because I can store anything, I can definitely store locations. That's just two numeric values, right? But Parse says, you know what, if you tell me that you're storing a, a GPS location, I'll let you do things like, hey, I'm at this position, tell me all the data that's within five miles. Now, we, we all know that's some simple math, right? If you don't want to do that simple math, uh, they will do all that for you. User system. Again, I can totally skip what they have and build my own user system. But there's one thing I like about building apps, it's building a user system one more damn time. <laughs> if I want to skip that, they say, you know what? You can store a user, we'll handle things like checking to make sure that the user names are, are unique. Uh, we'll handle things like email verification. Remember I mentioned setting up a server? They'll send email for you, actually. And they will have their own kind of hosted page to kind of land on when the user clicks that. And they will tell you that they're verified and all that. So they'll do a lot of the user kind of boring stuff for you. And you, and you just say, I need a user. They also have support for some server-side functions, written in JavaScript, that you can update via command interface. And they also do push very, very well for both Android and iOS. I'm not sure about the other ones. In terms of the code, is that readable at all? Uh, 
So a little bit more complex, you actually have a relation API where I can name what the relation is, in this case, you can tags in, and then pass an array. And they allow you to add stuff on the array, take stuff out, you can read it, but essentially that's all you have to do to worry about it. But again, b.save, this will do all the network stuff for me, all the persistence, I don't worry about it. Talking about queries, so queries can be as complex as you want. I won't read all those things, but you have all the different types of operators. You can mix and match these. So again, I want all the beer that has this CD to get higher and this calorie to make it lower and this price, whatever. You can do all I can do limits, you can do starting indexes. So if you're worried about doing paging, parts has that built in as well. You can do multiple types of sorting. You could ask just for the count so you know how much data is in that particular query. You can also join multiple queries together. So this can be as complex as whatever your business needs may be. This is a real simple example where I'm creating a query and I'm saying I want all the beers that have a EBV over 10. I want to maximize my beer drinking experience tonight. On that query, I do dot find and very similar API, a success and a failure, with the success being just an array of those objects that I can work with. They have a full admin console, I, I mentioned it earlier, so you actually can actually kind of see what you're using in case you're worried about uh, going above your particular paid tier. Uh, also very handy that you actually make data there. So if you have, for example, not built the forms yet to uh, let you enter stuff in, uh, but you want to put some fake data out there just so you can actually list it on screen. You can do that on there, or if something's going wrong, you can see how far it's storing your data and work with it. There's also multiple settings. So I kind of talked about the fact that it should scare you that you're storing application ID and a special JavaScript key in your phone data code. They have full settings that can lock all that down. So for example, when I made a beer object, Parse said, if there's no beer object, guess what? Now there's a beer type. That's scary, right? So Parse says we can stop you from doing that, like for example, once you go into production. And you can also do things like saying only people who have logged in can actually create and read data. They have a very deep security systems in terms of, you know, I made these beers and these groups of people can look at it and these can't and all that. That's really, that, that, that particular area is the only place where the free tier kind of cuts you off a little bit and you have to uh, consider paying yourself. And just pretty screenshots. These are my demos, so no one uses them ever. Uh, this is a sample app I built called Cow Tip Line that allowed you to record good places to tip cows. I'm from the South, so that's what we do when we're not eating the cows. Uh, this is an example of this data browser, and it's, I guess, a little bit fuzzy, but again, if you need to quickly make something on there without worrying about building the HTML first, this is a really kind of simple way of having it up there and allowing you to just work with it, uh, work with the existing data first. So, uh, all of that so far has nothing at all to do with um, yeah, but I'll, I'll be done in a regular vanilla website. Where the really good stuff comes in, obviously, is you're going to mix together what PhoneGap gives you and what Parse gives you. And like taking any two things and mixing them together, obviously, it gets better. Like, for example, the fun of your yard and competitive racing. Obviously, this is a good idea. By the way, that's me in the white. <laughs> Everybody said white lies? Okay. So, I built a real quick demo. Uh, this is not the prettiest demo in the world. Uh, I use jQuery Mobile, uh, make it real, real quick. And what you're seeing here is a real simple note-taking application. So I go in here and say, uh, guess what, after me is here. And use the camera, or supposedly, we were told, right? This case, I just, oh, you lie. That was talking earlier. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, but normally, I could, select a, a, a picture or take a picture, and then upload all this to Parse. And then that, that data, again, because it's stored on Parse, I get the same thing in any other device, using, in this case, the Android emulator. And if actually, we'll go ahead and just not pick a picture. Just do save. And again, fetching that from Parse and what we hear on Android, I'll see the same thing. 
takes that slower because Android emulator. Cool. And again, so if I had an internet existing.com, because Parse has that best API, that exact same data could speak in there as well. Uh, the code behind this, I'll put it on my blog, it's not that exciting, but it's really just more of what you saw on screen. But the only really complex part was uh, when you store a file on Parse, it's asynchronous. So I have a little bit of different logic saying, if you're doing a picture and note, do this. If you're doing just a note, do that. So that's why I have that nice uh, thing else up there. And the picture is coming, again, from the phone gap API. So taking parts of being able to store that data, mixing it in with the coolness of phone gap, I think is a great combination. And that's, oh, docs, I 